Good evening and welcome to worship. We're glad that you are here and glad for the folks who are joining us online. <clears throat> we are sharing communion tonight and the directions are in your bulletin. Everyone is welcome to this meal of love and grace. Uh, you'll be served in your seats for those of you who are here. Wait to eat until we invite you to do so. A non-gluten option is available on the tray of bread in a pre-packaged uh, container and there is both red wine and white juice on the trays. You can choose either. For those of you at home, we encourage you to find something that represents communion for you at home. And you might also like to find a candle or turn on the light on your cell phone for during silent night. All through this season of preparation for this night, we have been spending some quiet time at the beginning of worship so that we can be still and wonder at the brilliance of this world, of the sacred all around us. Tonight we, are, we sit among the reflection of the lights of Christmas, and you have likely had some Christmas lights up at home for a little while, or you've seen lights decorating houses and stores in our neighborhoods and cities, shining lights this time of year, um, to help soften our focus a bit, allowing us to see the ordinary places and people lit up in the reflections. Even our houses can feel special with the trees, lights illuminating the room in a magical way. So I hope you've had a few moments to stop and notice and take it all in. Times of quiet contemplation are not just good for the soul, they are good for our whole being and our being with each other. And so let us begin our worship again as we have been by settling in and slowing down just for a moment. So I invite you to get a little more comfortable where you are sitting and instead of closing your eyes, I'd like you to find one detail here in the room or in your room at home, if you're joining us online, to look at something that brings you joy. It could be a light, a candle, anything. If other senses are better for you, then listen or touch or smell. There are many ways to drink in a moment deeply. Take a deep intentional breath in and out and take a moment to settle in. Now shift your attention to something else or simply let your eyes wander and take in more and more Details that perhaps you didn't notice when you first came in, or if you're at home, things that have become so ordinary that you have stopped noticing them. What colors are getting your attention? What lights? Continue to use your senses intentionally, marveling at all the things you notice. And now focus on one light out of all the lights where you are. And let this reflection of an anointing, let this reflection of light be an anointing of insight for seeing your own journey through the lens of the sacred. Continue to just breathe, listen, and see with your heart as we sing. Upon this moment, upon this people, Upon this place, the holy cups and sacred knowing bring sacred being for sacred doing of God's plan. And repeat after me. We pray for hope this night. We pray for love this night. We pray for joy this night. We pray for peace this night. We open to see the sacred reflected in all things. We open to see our deepest selves as a gift of holy presence. This is the gift of the Christ mystery, lighting the way to peace.
Upon this moment, upon this people, upon this place, the holy comes, and sacred knowing brings sacred being for sacred doing of God's plan. So repeat after me, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. So please stand in body or spirit to greet each other and to share God's light with each other. And we send our love and light to those of you at home.
Hi, friends. Okay, can we try it again? Hi, friends. <laughs> so, we are celebrating, what are we celebrating today? Christmas, right? So, do any of you know what this is? It's a nativity, right? Do you think there's something missing? And what's Christmas about? Jesus. So, do you think you should put Jesus, baby Jesus in the manger? Okay, Reagan, right you can do it. <laughs> Set. All good? So I have a little thing that we're going to say, okay? So we're going to finish our time together with, I'm going to say something, and then you're going to say, a light of Christmas in me, a light of Christmas in you. Can we try that part? A light of Christmas in me, a light of Christmas in you. Okay. The light of Christ is shining, something sacred, something new. A light of Christmas in me, a light of Christmas in you. The light of Christ is beaming with a radiance pure and true. A light of Christmas in me, a light of Christmas in you. The light of Christ is a blessing who we are and what we do. A light of Christmas in me, a light of Christmas in you. All right. You're going to get back to your family, and you can grab a bag from in that bin. Okay? Your seats. So we look at tonight's story, the story reflected from Luke 2. It's not difficult to imagine this night as reflecting the sacred we gather and sing and light candles and dare to believe that love truly enters the world time and again, and anything is possible. What may be more difficult to understand, however, is that love is ours, not because we've been good, as if God is Santa Claus, but simply because we are the beloved, the firstborn of God. Our very being reflects the sacred. The incarnation of God in human flesh is proof. Let's hear the story reflected this night. Around the time of Elizabeth's amazing pregnancy and John's birth, the emperor in Rome, Caesar Augustus, required everyone in the Roman Empire to participate in a massive census. The first census since Quirinius had become governor of Syria. Each person to go to his or her ancestral city to be counted. Mary's fiance Joseph from Nazareth in Galilee had to participate in the census in the same way everyone else did. Because he was a descendant of King David, his ancestral city was Bethlehem, David's birthplace. Mary, who was now late in her pregnancy that the messenger Gabriel had predicted, accompanied Joseph. While in Bethlehem, she went into labor and gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped the baby in a blanket and laid him in a feeding trough because the inn had no room for them. Thank you.
Nearby in the fields outside of Bethlehem, a group of shepherds were guarding their flocks from predators in the darkness of the night. Suddenly a messenger of the Lord stood in front of them and the darkness was replaced by a glorious light, the shining light of God's glory. They were terrified. Don't be afraid. Listen, I bring good news, news of great joy, news that will affect all people everywhere. Today in the city of David, a liberator has been born for you. He is the promised anointed one, the supreme authority. You will know you have found him when you see a baby wrapped in a blanket, living, lying in a feeding trough. And at that moment, the first heavenly messenger was joined by thousands of other messengers, a vast heavenly choir, and they praised God. heavenly messengers disappeared into heaven, the shepherds were buzzing with conversation. Let's rush down to Bethlehem right now. Let's see what's happening. Let's experience what the Lord has told us about. So they ran into town and eventually they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the feeding trough. After they, had, after they saw the baby, they spread the story of what they had experienced and what had been sent to them about this child. Everyone who heard their story couldn't stop thinking about its meaning. Mary, too, pondered all these events, treasuring each memory in her heart. The shepherds returned to their flocks, praising God for all they had seen and heard, and they glorified God for the way the experience had unfolded, just as the heavenly messenger had predicted. This is the story reflecting the light of goodness that God has created the light that we are called to reflect in our own lives for each other and for all the world. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. 
this time of year becomes one that is full of many emo emotions. Wow, that was a weird way to say that word. Emotions. Joy, excitement, frustration, exhaustion, and maybe even some sadness and sorrow sprinkled in there for, for good measure. We are in a time that is just all about the different feels. And yet here we are on the cusp of the birth of the Christ child, the one who is coming into the world to save all of us, the one who will fulfill all of the prophecy, and the one who will eventually give up his entire earthly life to satisfy what has been ordained upon him since his incarnation. Usually we're anticipating this birth with excitement. Usually the trees are decorated, the garland has been hung with care, and we have the ability to see all of the thousands of Christmas lights that are sprinkled amongst almost every neighborhood possible. But sometimes, no matter how sparkly the lights are, or how many carols that we sing or hear, there's not much that can overcome the darkness we might feel or see. Every day we witness the darkness around us, both in the sun setting at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and in the many things that flood our headlines. It all becomes too much to ignore. It's overwhelming. And no wonder we end up feeling all the feels this time of year. Our journey through Advent kind of comes to an end right about now. The manger inside the stable will no longer be empty. Jesus is born. God incarnate comes to earth in the form of a human infant. And there you have it the most sacred being any one person could try and come up with is born. Jesus is here. As we have made this journey together, we have walked through spaces and places and knowing and time. And we've learned that even in the mundaneness, we can find the sacred. That the sacred is reflected in everything that is around us. In every face we see, in every tear that is shed, in every single person. There is something sacred or something special, something that makes it all worth it. So even as we have been surrounded by the sacred in our everyday lives, how is it that we can view, we can't view ourselves and sometimes others as sacred beings? Especially when we are forced to constantly struggle to find worth within ourselves. When we hear this word being as applied to humans, we think of these external flesh sacks that are filled with bones and muscles and other random organs and goo, and we focus solely on the external parts of our bodies. And then, when we're focusing on all those external parts of our bodies, we're focusing on all of the things that we think are not good. We get infiltrated into thinking that if we don't fit into some sort of box, that we're not good enough or we're not worthy enough, or that we are flawed. And yet, despite all of these flaws that we as humans decide to think that we have, God still decided that this is how God was going to come into the world. God decided that to experience what humanity was like was to become one of us, beginning with being birthed, flaws and all. God saw humanity and deemed it worthy. 
we hear all of the time that God created humans in God's image. All of us. All of the good parts. All of the bad parts. All of the parts that make us uncomfortable and all of the parts that make us confident. In God's eyes, all of us are worthy and good. God alone couldn't understand all of these things that humanity went through until God experienced it and God could figure out what we needed most. And so we are presented with a baby lying in some hay, surrounded by love and comfort, and it is a big deal. It is all the feels. So let us fast forward from that manger scene, from the stable with animals and the baby in some hay. Let's fast forward to where we are in 2022. We come to a place where we are being tasked to find the sacred in all of the things around us, to find the things that are worthy and good and special in a time where so much still does not make sense in a time when we are facing division and injustice and hardship all around us, in a time when every day we experience all of the different feels and emotions. And some days it's hard. It's hard to find the sacredness in all of the places we go and in all of the people we see. And yet, every time we hear the story of the birth of Jesus, we have the opportunity to be reminded that God chose humans. And in that choice, we are good and we are worthy. So, dear friends, as we patiently, or maybe not so patiently, await the birth of the Christ child, as we wait for God to once again choose us, remember that you were created and chosen, flaws and all, and that you and all of those you meet are the sacred beings that God has chosen us to be. And even if it's hard to believe that, maybe just for tonight, that will be enough. Amen. Let us begin our time of prayer with our prayer song, Emmanuel. acceptance 
as taught by Jesus. God of great compassion and love, listen to the prayers of these, your people, and hear us as we pray together the St. Patrick's Prayer. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise. Emmanuel, Emmanuel, his name is called Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter into our time of offering, I would just like to thank everyone for their generous donations to our Christmas missions of the Allentown Rescue Mission and Laurel House. There are two important missions, and we thank you all for their support. And we pray over our offerings tonight. God of birthing new life into the world and our lives, we bring our gifts to you and to this church and community. Gifts of heart, spirit, energy, love, time, resources, dreams, hopes, passion, compassion, meaning, and purpose, and faith. We come to the manger and we bow, asking for your guidance and blessing on these gifts and on us. Deepen our commitment to you and to each other. Pour your light on these gifts and on us and on your church and all people, we pray. Amen.
everyone is welcome to this meal of love and grace. You'll be served in your seats. Please wait to eat and drink until the pastor invites you to do so. A non-gluten option with juice is available in a pre-packaged container on the bread tray. Both red wine and white grape juice are on the tray of cups. Please choose either. Christ invites all of us to this table, for he is the one who is reflected in all things and unites all things. There is a place for you. The cosmic banquet of hope, love, joy, and peace and light is set for a hungry and hurting world. When we take in and take on Christ, we are the body of Christ, sent forth into the world to lay his banquet wherever we find ourselves. So let us open ourselves so that our hearts might be filled completely. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, word of God, Logos, from the beginning. You made us reflected of your image and set us ablaze with the breath of life. When we turned away and our love dulled, your love remained a, as light for our lives. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their unending hymn. be seated. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. A reflection of this purpose and anointed as his disciples, we are his body in the world, the body of Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Anoint this community with your Holy Spirit and pour out your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them a reflection of your life and love so that we may be for the world a Christ mirror, radiating and multiplying this life and love in the world. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup in which we bless the cup of blessing is blood of the body of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are ready.
Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. May the precious body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep and preserve you into eternal life. Amen.
all season long. We have been marking sacred time, people, and places with the idea of anointing, which is the literal meaning of the word Christ. We believe we are all Christified, which means that the sacred is reflected in and through us all. There is an obscure Irish fable of St. Bridget, patroness of that country, that says St. Bridget was also a time traveler and was mysteriously present at the birth of Jesus. She had a shell of water with her, and she placed three drops on the infant Jesus' head. The Irish are quite generous with their blessings, and apparently St. Bridget was their representative at the stable that night. This fable is simply a wonderful story to help us remember that all times are holy, not just that night so long ago. All people are sacred because God loves us by becoming us. So right now, I invite you to an anointing of sorts by touching your forehead lightly three times with a sign that you are blessed and that you are also part of the story of hope, love, joy, and peace this night. I invite all who are able to rise and join in singing Silent Night, and you can turn your candles on when the music begins and join in the singing.
when you notice the sunlight dancing on the surface or a nightlight glowing in the darkness. Let there be signs that this is the Christ light revealed, revealed again and again and through this world. Know that your brilliant presence is pouring more light into a weary world. God loved us by becoming us, and this means you are already reflecting the sacred. In the name of the Creator, Christ, and Spirit of Hope, Amen.